there's a mage problem in Hearthstone. Or at the very least, that's what some people are saying right now. I've seen some videos out there, a lot of talk on uh, Twitter and Reddit and so on and so forth that mage is a problematic class right now in the game. And I've seen changes like nerfing Luna's Pocket Galaxy, Conjurer's Calling, even Hall of Faming Mountain Giant, an idea coming from a pretty prominent community member. And uh, I just wanted to take a look using perhaps real data instead of just my own personal anecdotes or perceptions. Not that those don't have value. There are smart people out there who say smart things. But for me, I wanted to go take a look at the numbers and see if we can learn anything about Mage and determine whether or not there is a problem. And if so, how do we fix it? So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Hey, buddy, watch this. Yeah, folks, that's right. In this video, I will be diving into the data from hsreplay.net and in particular some of their premium features as well. Now, I don't have a relationship with HS Replay. This is not like a sponsored thing, but it's a great tool and uh, it's kind of what's necessary and what's available out there to look a little bit deeper into some of these card stats. So uh, just for the sake of making this video possible, I would encourage you guys to check it out if you haven't already although i'm sure if you're watching my channel you probably have so the first thing i wanted to take a look at is just whether or not i think there is a mage problem because a lot of people are saying that but when i look at something like this which is to say that when i look at this which is the meta report for hearthstone right now over the last one day mage does not have any tier one decks they only have tier two decks although they do have four tier two decks and they're certainly very close to the tier one decks when it comes to win percentage right now so uh normally people complain about like the best deck in the game and how hard it is to beat i don't know if that's the case with mage but i will say that mage still has a lot of good options and more so than any other class here i think hunter's probably next with three decks up here but mage has four uh semi-distinct builds here i would argue that are all rather competitive so just looking at this i wouldn't necessarily say mage feels like a problem from the overall meta standpoint but i say this a lot and i'm gonna say it again problems in hearthstone aren't just based on win rate sometimes it's about feel and experience in other words decks that are extremely high variance often feel like they can steal a win from you where you never really had a chance that sort of rock, paper, scissors mentality where you just queue up into a game and sometimes you're just going to lose it and there was nothing you could do about it. That's a bad experience in Hearthstone. And I think that's probably what's happening with Mage and why most people feel like it's a problem. And I think it's pretty clear at this point that there are three cards that are most commonly being attributed to this phenomenon. Mountain Giant, Conjurer's Calling, and Luna's Pocket Galaxy. So I just want to take a deeper dive into each of those and see what we can learn about the play experience for these cards. So first up, let's take a look at Conjurer's Calling, and I shrank myself on screen here to make sure that I wasn't blocking any of this data. So there are two charts on this screen I want you to pay attention to. Again, this is HS Replay's premium feature set. It's pretty darn cool. Again, not sponsored. So the chart on the left is a popularity chart. In other words, the... Uh, likelihood of this card being played on a given turn in a Hearthstone game on average. So you'll see here, for instance, on turn four, Conjurer's Calling is very rarely played, right? It's, you don't have time to get it out and make it significant by then because you want to hit your big stuff, hard to get the big stuff out like Mountain Giants on turn three into a Conjurer's Calling on four. That's just not that common. So we start to see the spikes on turn five because this is where you get those like crazy Cadgar Conjurer's Calling turns if you can line it up perfectly. And then turn six and seven are where it really sees the most play. Something like 45% of all Conjurer's Calling plays happen within these three turns. Uh, so the chart on the right is the other thing I want you to see, which is the win rate of Conjurer's Calling when played on a given turn. And in this case, we can see here turn four win rates for Conjurer's Calling are 60%, which is very good, obviously. We looked at the deck win rates of the entire meta. The best decks in the game were like 55%. So whenever you can hit a Conjurer's Calling on turn four, that is usually a very, very good sign that it's going to impact your win rate in a positive direction. We're looking for the instances where playing this card at the right time just auto wins you the game. It creates that binary experience where it's either win-loss, you don't really get to play around with it much. 
And as you can see, Conjurer's Calling spikes at 67% when played on turn five. That's often that like Cadgar Conjurer stuff, or maybe you just play the turn four Mountain Giant, you follow it up with Conjurer's on five. That's such a ridiculously strong play that the win rate really, really spikes for Conjurer's Calling. And that is what I would say a pretty unhealthy win rate. Like that's where you're getting into that rock, paper, scissors territory, because only a third of the time can you really beat a turn five Conjurer's Calling. Now, you'll also note that turn five is where you start to see this getting played more consistently. So it's where these two charts are both tall that we create a lot of problems. Because if this was still only being played like one or 2% of the time with this sort of win rate, it wouldn't be that impactful. It'd be extremely inconsistent. Now, that's still not good for the game. Like randomly losing stuff to extremely inconsistent things feels bad. But when those start to rise together and you're fairly consistently losing to ridiculous stuff, that's where it creates so many frustrating moments. So you're starting to match these two charts up is where it gets interesting. And you'll see on turn six where we really start to see the Conjurer's Calling, there's still a 65% win rate, which is in my opinion, way too high. I'd like to see these numbers be like in that 55 to maybe 58 range or lower for most cards. It's fine for cards to be strong, so I'm not saying they all need to be 50%, but somewhere a little bit below 60 is nice. And even on turn 7, you're still at 62%. And then as you move to turn 8 or turn 9, I think this is where it starts to get into a healthier win rate as far as I'm concerned. Still making a very positive impact on the deck's win rate overall, but not just absolutely steamrolling opponents. So I think this turn five, turn six, turn seven range, maybe even up to turn eight for Conjurer's Calling, is a bit of a problem. It's maintaining these really high win rates while being played fairly often. So yes, I do think right now Conjurer's Calling looks like it's creating a lot of bad experiences for people. 67% of the time, just like stealing games outright where it feels like you don't have much of a chance to counter it. Now to give you a comparison, let's take a look at Mountain Giant, right? Because this is another card that was cited as potentially a problem. We can see here for Mountain Giant, uh, most commonly played between turns four and six, you know, almost 50% it looks like, uh, or maybe even more than 50% of its time is often played this early in the game and then it drifts off pretty quick. It gets weaker later in the game. You don't have as many cards in hand. It's harder to play. It's not as strong. So pretty expected trend there. And if we look at the win rate for uh, Mountain Giant, it's interesting. It's not really that crazy. It is in that range. I think is a little bit healthier. It's still a very strong turn four play as you'd expect, like it should be. And it's very commonly played on turn four. So it wins games and that's Mountain Giant historically has done that. We've seen it in Handlock in the days of old, too. When you can drop it that early, sometimes you just overwhelm. But it's really apparently that follow-up with Conjurer's Calling that makes it so crazy strong, bumping it to those like 67% win rate scenarios. And it pretty quickly falls off into what I would think is a healthy-ish range. The deck is averaging 54, 55% anyway. So moving into 58, 57, playing a good card, you'd expect it to jump the win rate a little bit. So this is totally fine as far as I'm concerned. Turn four, a little bit concerning, but still within the realm of reason. I don't actually think Mountain Giant looks like a problem based on these charts. To me, this looks like a fairly healthy way to play a card. And I think since it's been around for a long time, it only occasionally becomes a bad feeling sort of card. I here don't really see a problem with Mountain Giant. It seems like the other supporting pieces that are enabling this thing to go crazy. So I wouldn't touch Mountain Giant based on this data. So now finally, let's take a look at Luna's Pocket Galaxy. And this one gets really intriguing because look at this chart on the left. Pocket Galaxy is played well over 50% of the time by turn five. And even often on turn four, despite being a five mana card, which means anytime you have the coin, basically, Luna's Pocket Galaxy is getting coined out on four. And as you can see from the win rate here, it is a ridiculously strong win rate too when played on turn four, coming in at 65%. Now that's still not as high as that 67 we saw with Conjurer's Calling, but considering how often it's played at these two turns where it's retaining a 65 and 60% win rate, I think it might actually be worse than Conjurer's Calling in a lot of ways because in over half of games, it's just winning them. You play it and your chances of winning increase enormously. Now, obviously it's not like 80 or 90%, so people can still win and that's fine, but it feels really, really bad to have your chances of winning reduced so far if your opponent just happens to hit 
this card in their mulligan or in the first few turns, they're able to get it out early. You just don't end up winning. And on top of that, you can see how fast Luna's Pocket Galaxy falls off. It becomes such a detrimental play later in the game. You can see these win rates really start to trend, trend downward late in the game. And that makes sense, right? Because you don't want to spend that much mana necessarily. You run out of minions to draw. Your chances of the one mana uh, minions making a quicker impact is reduced because they're happening later in the game. So that's not a surprise by any means, but it really showcases the binary experience of Luna's Pocket Galaxy, where you either hit it early and you win, and it's the best card in your deck by a mile, or you hit it late and you don't win. And it's just kind of a wasted thing. And that makes the opponent who's playing against Luna's Pocket Galaxy feel kind of hopeless. Like they just don't really have anything to do or any chance to beat it. And I will say beyond that, Luna's Pocket Galaxy is universally good on turn four. Whereas Conjurer's Calling, the reason its play rates are lower is because it's conditional. You have to have both a good thing to Conjurer's and the Conjurer's Calling. So it has to line up. Luna's Pocket Galaxy doesn't have to line up. The only way it totally backfires is if somehow you've already got every other minion in your hand, but that's just not how the decks are built, and that's so incredibly unlikely that you're free to play it on turn four or five with impunity. Like, it just won't ever backfire. So it becomes, I think, an even more problematic card than Conjurers despite these win rates because of the combination of these two charts. When you see play rates that high and win rates that high, that's where things are lining up in a pretty terrible way. Not to mention, these spikes are happening earlier in the game than with Conjurers. If you remember, Conjurers was seeing play most commonly on 5, 6, 7, 8. This is all turn 4 and turn 5. So it's hitting earlier, and it's hitting just as hard. So I do think Luna's Pocket Galaxy looks like it really is a problem for Mage. Now to give you a little bit of context, I pulled up the data for Barnes in wild format, a card that is widely considered another one of these like instant win cards. If you play it at the right time, it just steals the game from your opponent. And I wanted you to look at its chart because it looks eerily familiar. It looks exactly like Luna's Pocket Galaxies. Now you can change the turn numbers here because this is three and four instead of four and five, but it's that exact same early spike where can be played on turn three with coin, more commonly played on its natural mana. But both of these represent, in this case, almost 60%, I think, of the plays for Barnes, which is ridiculous. And then beyond that, the win rate, right? It's enormously high, even higher than Pocket Galaxy, but pretty darn close, actually. Just a few percentage points difference here on those turns when you can do it, and then it tends to fall off a little bit later in the game. And it stays still pretty high here because the deck's win rate is just high, right? Like, it's Big Priest is winning regardless in a lot of cases. So if Barnes is a problem... For the same reasons, I think you have to extrapolate and say, well, Luna's Pocket Galaxy looks like a problem too. And although Luna's is hitting a turn later, which perhaps makes it less of a problem because this is even earlier in the game that it's deciding things, still the exact same style of card that I would venture is a really bad experience for players and not good for Hearthstone. So yeah, Mage looks like a problem to me. I think although the win rates are reasonable, the bad experiences... Those turns where you just lose the game on the spot do exist, and that means it probably needs a little bit of a change. How would I do that? Well, I would probably just move Luna's Pocket Galaxy to six mana. It was seven, if you remember, and they buffed it to five. I think they might have just overstepped a little bit, so let's bump it back to six. But I might also change Conjurer's Calling. I don't know if... You need to do both. Fixing one might make Mage feel okay, but Conjurer still has some problematic stats in those early to mid-game turns. So maybe you even make Conjurer's Calling four mana. And that also does a side bonus of taking it out of the magic trick pool, so it's less randomly generated for Mage. So a couple big hits there. Now, that might actually take Mage too far and nerf it a little too much. So you might have to choose one or the other. In that case, I would go for Pocket Galaxy based on these numbers, but either would certainly help uh, some of the time, which would, you know, make the game feel a little bit better to play. If you guys have some changes you think would be better for either of these cards, or if you might buff something else to compensate for these nerfs, like share your ideas. This is a, a complex system. Changing one thing can change a lot of things. So I don't claim that these are the perfect fixes. They're the kind of obvious ones that, that sit on my mind. Uh, Blizzard would have a much harder task solving the meta after this happens and figuring out what would be best for it. I don't envy them in that position, but I do think they need to take a closer look at 
these cards because I have a feeling it's frustrating enough players to in some cases make them even stop playing Hearthstone. That's the last thing that we want to see. Now, finally, before I close out this video, just because I'm saying Mage is a problem doesn't mean I don't think other things are problems too. I've already made videos on cards like Dr. Boom Mad Genius that I still think is a little bit problematic. So I'm not saying these are the only cards that need to be addressed, just that these do look like they're creating some problems. So all that said, thank you for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this breakdown. And until next time, game on.